target to hit, so that's why I'm not standing behind the podium. Uh, so welcome to the first town hall meeting of 2015. Uh, we are today here to talk about uh, the tobacco-free uh, policy at Murray State University. Uh, just a couple, what I'd like to do to help frame the discussion is kind of talk a little bit about how we got here, because I think that is important. Uh, as one person responded to uh, the email announcing this town hall meeting, it was a very insightful student who responded, is this a debate? Well, not necessarily. We are here because of several factors. Uh, the first factor that started this whole thing in motion uh, is last fall, uh, Governor Brashear issued an executive order demanding or requiring most state agencies and facilities to go smoking tobacco free by November the 22nd. In that executive order, he did provide allowances or exemptions for several institutions, one of which was state prisons, the other which was higher education institutions. But that prompted the discussion uh, at, our, at our university and across the state specifically because we are one of two public universities that did in fact did not have a stringent uh, no smoking or tobacco free policy. The other one was being Western Kentucky University. All of the other public universities are either tobacco free completely or smoke free are in the process of going in that order. And I do believe all but one of those are actually all uh, tobacco free. University of Kentucky, Louisville, Eastern, and et cetera are tobacco free. What, in response to that, when the governor asks a question, I think it's important to provide an answer. And so we here at Murray State University uh, established a task force to study that issue. Insurance and benefits, John, for two or three years, we're, to study, we're already in the process of studying this issue from a different perspective. They were studying it from would it be a cost savings on the ins insurance side if we want smoke or tobacco free. And they already had a committee investigating this, researching this for again the last, was it two years, John, or thereabouts? All right, I got my history right. That's good. And so I charged them, since they were already doing uh, the work, to really expand and to expedite their, their efforts. And their charge was basically to look at three various options. And if they felt uh, so inclined, to come up with additional options. The first option was do nothing, what would happen? Stay as is. The second option was to have what we would call an enhanced policy, which would strengthen our current policy, do some different things, and it got dubbed the campus enhancement plan. The third option was to go smoke free, which basically means no use of tobacco that is lit, vapor, and et cetera, e-cigarettes and the like. And then obviously the, the final option was to go tobacco free. I felt it was important that this committee conduct its work in a pretty uh, 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 transparent light. Uh, and they did a wonderful job in doing that. They did surveys, they did uh, town hall meetings, they had their committee meetings that were open, and they did a very, very good job of providing direction on all of those areas. And at the same time, I felt it was important that they didn't feel encumbered to come up with a specific course of action, but to provide recommendations that can lead to eventual board implementation. Ultimately, this is the board decision. Ultimately, the board is responsible for the, for the, the, the campus, uh, the environment, and the like. And at the December 4th board meeting, uh, they, heard, they, they heard the report from the special committee. They listened to, the invest, to all of the different uh, uh, proposals, and they had a very, very robust discussion on this very topic. A couple things I think is important to uh, point out. As part of the survey, 77.1% uh, of our campus community members, faculty, staff, and students, do not use tobacco. 77.1% of those who responded said that they did not use tobacco. Students, 73.4, did not use tobacco. Staff, 83.8, and the, and the faculty, uh, nearly 88%, did not use tobacco. That is in line with, and interestingly, if you, uh, if you follow some of the other trends, with what is going on around the state of Kentucky. Roughly 75% to 80% of the citizens in Kentucky do not use tobacco. So we were right in line with that. Once you go into the use of tobacco, be it cigarettes, be it chewing tobacco, be it uh, vapor and, and et cetera, we do see some interesting trends. Vapor use, believe it or not, or surprising or not, 
uh, is a higher among our student population than the other two. Chewing tobacco is very, very low. And so again, on those lines. So uh, as part of the discussion with the board, they took that into consideration. They also took into consideration the numerous comments that were presented uh, to the board. And they also took in their own uh, discussions at their own businesses, their own place of employment, their own leadership skills. In the end, they passed a policy that basically states that Murray State University will be tobacco free. And we are not the first university to do this. There's 1,014 other universities as of December 15th that have made that pledge. But their, their policy that they passed was that Murray State University, all of its property that it owns, that it leases, and that it operates will be tobacco free. This includes uh, chewing tobacco, uh, cigarettes, pipes, e-cigarettes, and the like. And again, I think it's an important point that this is for all property that is owned or leased by the university. And in discussing this with various others, it's important that we think about this not as a punitive measure, but one that we can use to talk about the healthy lifestyles of, of our campus. With that policy in place, like any good university administrator, what do we do? Form a committee. So we did. This is the, the members of the steering committee that are providing me advice and wisdom on multiple facets uh, of this policy, uh, of this whole uh, uh, situation. First and foremost, they are providing a significant advice and wisdom on the poly policy itself. In drafting this policy, uh, we looked at many other universities, again, uh, that have gone through this and have coalesced what works for other universities, what didn't work for other universities, what makes sense for the Murray State community, what makes, for, makes sense for the unique circumstances that we have here, and looking at similar type of universities. And the committee has been instrumental in helping me and guide me through some of the, the policy drafting uh, in and of itself. They are also will be instrumental in the, in, in the implementation of the policy uh, as we move forward and the continual collection of information. Another part of this aspect is not just creating a policy. Uh, to be honest, that's the, relatively the easy part. It's about how to, uh, to, to promote and communicate the policy on an ongoing basis. Having gone through this at a different university, I will say that the success of the policy in of itself will be how well it is communicated throughout the university community, throughout the multiple audiences and, and constituencies that we serve. Both the ones that are community members, i.e. faculty, students, and staff, but also our neighbors. Also the thousands of visitors that come onto our campus on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Alumni coming back for various events, athletic events, concerts, uh, and just, all, just walking across the campus on a daily basis. How do we always have that at the forefront that we are a smoke-free and tobacco-free uh, environment? We also, as part of the policy that was passed by the board in December, was to also, and again, I think this is very important, is to have cessation programs and education programs. So again, this, this uh, steering committee will be instrumental in providing those elements. With regards to the policy itself, one of the key things that I think is important that we will continue to emphasize is that this is about creating a healthy environment. This is not a punitive, this is not a judgmental, this is about creating a healthy environment for our faculty and our staff and our students and visitors to be in while they, they are here. Also, there are so many definitions and uses and whatnot with regarding to, to tobacco and the like. In my past iteration, uh, when we implemented a policy similar to this at a former institution, I learned what hookah was. I didn't know what hookah was three years ago, and I learned what hookah is. Huh. There's another thing called blimps. I didn't know what blimps were, but that's a version of hookah that's now replacing hookah. So again, this policy talks about all of the different forms and aspects of tobacco and tobacco use. E-cigarettes, vapor, uh, chewing tobacco, snuff. Um, I learned about mint-laced nicotine and all sorts of things in between. And so when we're trying to develop a policy in this like, we need to make sure that we take into all accounts that are currently existing as well as future. 
I will say that at my former institution, was in, which was in the state of Oregon, we thought we did a really good job of looking at all future elements of what people might smoke on campus. One thing we did not count on was that uh, Oregon at the uh, January 1st is now a state in where marijuana is legal. I won't get involved in that, but I know their Twinkie sales have increased. Um, again, we also need to talk about where it is in existence and where this policy is. And I think it's very important that a key aspect of that is that this is on all property that is owned in Lisa Murray State. If you are on the property, the tobacco use in all forms will be prohibited. Part of the policy talks about the promotion of cessation programs and how those will be delivered and, and whatnot. It does not go into in depth what those cessation programs will be, and nor should any policy in fact do that, but it does say that the university will be doing that and providing it for our immediate uh, community members, our faculty, staff, uh, as well as our students. We're not gonna have cessation programs for our visitors, for example, but we are gonna be talking about and educating about the available cessation programs throughout the community. And also an important part about this as well is that it is for all Murray State property. I must emphasize that that is only leased by the university. This includes our regional campuses. This includes, for example, if we all of a sudden leased an office space in Louisville and et cetera. It is for all property that is owned and leased by the university. Like any good policy, you need some exemptions. And there are some exemptions that are inherent to, to the work of a university. Research. Dean Brandon up there does, do, does a wonderful job on uh, doing a lot of research on tobacco. In fact, just yesterday we received a grant uh, from the Burley Council, is that correct, Dean Brandon, uh, of tobacco for the study of tobacco and its harvesting and et cetera. And so for research purposes. And that does not only include the growing of tobacco, but also the use of tobacco and, and those type of things. Uh, um, religious ceremonies, theatrical performances, and the like. The key aspect of this is that those exemptions will need to be stated in advance and approved by the appropriate individual. What, what, I, what will happen is, is I uh, ultimately have the right of exemption. I will delegate academic exemptions to the provost who then in turn will most likely delegate it to the dean and then we'll hold a, a people accountable in that mechanism. Another interesting element is that we have an organization that owns property in which the, the university uses but does not own, does not lease, does not control. And so we have an exemption for uh, those, those properties that are owned by the, the uh, Murray State University Foundation. A wrinkle to that is that there are employees of the foundation on that property. And those employees will follow all existing, per their existing policy, all policies of Murray State. So wherever those employees are, wherever those are, employees are working, will indeed be smoke free. But we do not have the jurisdiction uh, to have that piece of property be completely smoke free. Now the Murray State Foundation may choose to follow our lead and do so and that's a different story. But right now this policy is dealing with the property and, and, and the employees that we control. And then finally, since I wrote the policy, I get the power of special exemptions. Uh, and to be honest, I will be very clear on this, it will be for very specific places and purposes and it will be very few and far between. All of those exemptions will be and must be reported to the Board of Regents on an ongoing basis so that they can be monitoring how this policy is in fact working or not working. And with regards to those special exemptions and policies, the university owns several houses in which single families live and uh, rent or whatever the case may be. And that is probably the only place where I will be thinking about a special exemption. Yes, Oakhurst is on the property. I do not smoke, I'm not gonna provide a special exemption. A president following me may choose differently. A key element of this policy and the success of it is how it's implemented. And this has been a wide range of discussion and debate among the steering committee and throughout the campus of how in fact do you implement this policy. I am taking the philosophy that we want to have this be educational. We do not want this to be punitive. I have no intention of appointing a czar of tobacco, for example. And I'm gonna rely 
on existing methodologies of enforcing policies. And to be honest, that's all of you. Well, I look at Jeff Gentry and not looking at the police department, that's all of you guys. Leave you out of it for a second. How do we enforce, for example, a, uh, a tardy, an employee that's always tardy, always coming in late? How do we, example, for example, uh, deal with a student who's always disrupting the classroom? How do we deal with a roommate or an individual living in one of our residential halls, and I know, Don, this never happens, who's always playing the music really loud at 3 a.m.? We deal with it internally. The students report to an RA. The RA brings it up through student code of conduct. A professor sees this action going on in the classroom and alerts his chair, who then alerts her dean. And then we go through a process. A staff member tells a supervisor, who then goes up the chain of command. It is that community enforcement of policies in which we're trying to learn to educate and to be good citizens that I am relying on for this policy. Now, in the discussions with the steering committee, interestingly, and if he would like to stand up and be recognized for his thought, I'd be more than happy to do that, but he doesn't have to. A thought has been presented that instead of going this way, let's in fact make it punitive and assign fines. First offense, don't do it again. Second offense, 30 bucks. The third offense, 50 bucks. Fourth offense, 100, et cetera, and goes on up. Um, I, that's an ongoing discussion that, that was discussed at the Student Government uh, uh, Association, uh, and it is an idea. However, my personal preference, and again, I'm just saying my own personal preference, I would much rather go on the more informative educational style than the punitive. I'm not above the punitive. I'm not above about increasing revenues. Right, Jay? But again, I think that, as the, as the policy is currently written, is how we've gone. I would appreciate your feedback on that. The committee would appreciate your feedback on that, both from a faculty and a staff, as well as a student perspective. Because again, this is an interesting dilemma or an interesting discussion point. I will say that 95% of the policies that I've looked at have gone the route of the educational format that I've discussed. However, if you go down to Vanderbilt and look on their campus, you will see a sign that says Vanderbilt is a tobacco-free environment. $50, was it $50, Jay? I think it was a $50 fine. And a misdemeanor on a, a further once. Big difference there is uh, Tennessee has made it a state law for all public, pro uh, public properties to be tobacco free, whereas we do not have that in our bailiwick yet, because there is a law being proposed in this session that will make Kentucky tobacco free. Another important part about this is that we don't want our students, our faculty and staff to be out there hanging dry. And so once the policy is approved, we will provide education about how to enforce the policy. Uh, there's another university uh, in the Commonwealth that has a very uh, comprehensive website that has a set of uh, frequent, frequently asked questions. And one of the things that they have is a script. If you see somebody violating the policy and you feel compelled to approach that individual, how to do so, and it gives you a very good sense of tips. And we will appropriately credit that university but copy what they've done. So there are, again, as I look at the situation, 1,041, 1,014 of the universities have done this. We can learn from them and make what sense. And so there's a lot of good things that will be moving out of there. We will also bring this tobacco policy, tobacco-free policy, at all of our orientation meetings for not only new students, but new faculty and staff. We part of the training for RAs, uh, uh, building leaders, and the like. It will need to become part of our rhetoric, part of our customs, and part of what we are doing. Key items, again, communication is a key aspect of this. Not only communication in town hall meetings like this and one-on-one -on -one communication, but the signage. When you walk on the campus, when you drive on the campus, 
the visibility of those signs that say Murray State University is a tobacco-free environment. Thank you for helping us maintain a healthy environment. Uh, on our website, on our material sent to students, uh, all of those different types of things that we were able to talk about Murray State being a tobacco-free university. Again, that also reinforces the education uh, component about why we did this and the, the, the healthy lifestyle and benefits that we hope to enjoy. And then also, again, creating more and more resources for cessation programs. Uh, one of the things that we have done, uh, and I'm really excited about these opportunity, we talk about the QEP program, Bringing Learning to Life. Uh, we are working with uh, Professor uh, Marsha Hinton and her class uh, to develop a strong communication plan for this. They are out doing great work and, and, and going through that process now. A linchpin in this is the February 27th board meeting when the, when the policy will be presented to the Board of Regents and they will accept it, change it, or do whatever they want to do because then we can start rolling out specific uh, uh, measures and, and whatnot on that. Also, Judy Lyles and Dana Manley and Lauren Smee are working very closely as well in developing the cessation programs. And those two will be forthcoming once the policy is brought forward. One thing I also forgot to mention uh, back under the key aspects, this policy will take place or take effect uh, in the draft on August the 5th. A lot of you may ask, August the 5th seems like a really strange date. Well, it is. We chose August 5th for various reasons. The policy that, or the motion that was passed by the board back in December gave me uh, and the university the opportunity to make sure that we were in full compliance or totally smoke free, if you want to call it that, by December 31st, one year of implementation. We chose August 5th because if we brought students, faculty, and staff back on the, for the fall semester and then had them go home for the holiday break and then come back and had a significant change, it's kind of hard to, to mix with that. And so we felt it was more important to do it in time for the fall semester. August 5th was chosen as well because our, our summer semester ends on August the 4th. And so again, it's that natural break. It is in advance of what the Board of Regents required, but in the end, I do think it is the most prudent way to go based on the way we think about the academic lifestyle and the academic programs. So where do we go from here? As I mentioned, this is not a debate. The policy will become, a policy will become part of our, our lexicon, if you want to call it that. What we need to do is go, to go from here is to collect information, to collect thoughts, to collect ideas. I've highlighted one or two of the things that gives the steering committee room for discussion, that they are discussing. And so from this meeting forward, I hope that you take the time to read the policy, digest it, ask questions, and hopefully, if you see something that you don't understand, ask why it's in there, and let's have that dialogue. If you have other ideas based on, for example, should it be a fine or should it be a student code of conduct or an employee faculty staff handbook issue, please let me know. Please let any member of the steering committee know. We are here to collect that information. This is clearly a draft. In the board's uh, December 4th meeting, it was also clear that I am to deliver them a policy at the February 27th meeting. If you have ideas, suggestions, comments, concerns, whatever you want to say, get them to me or a member of the, of the, of the steering committee by January 30th. The, I will be meeting with the committee on that day. We will talk about a lot of these issues and continue to have that dialogue. They will provide me their final thoughts and wisdoms uh, by the 6th. I will then take a week and turn it around and have it out to the campus uh, as a near final draft and to the board. And when I say near final draft, this is a board decision. Just like we took the whole notion of the whole idea of tobacco free, smoke free, uh, campus enhancement and everything else, this is a board policy. We will provide them our best, our best recommendation and our best thoughts and then they will take it from there. And then that will be voted on at the February 27th meeting. And then we will take it from there. I want to emphasize again, 
in, in uh, uh, my conclusion is that I appreciate the work of the steering committee. I appreciate the work uh, of the task force that before that got us to this point. I also appreciate the numerous comments from all of you that I've received just walking across campus. I have received comments through face to face. I've received comments through my email. Some of you students have my text. I got comments through text and also Facebook. I'm all over the place. Keep those comments coming. This is a change for our university. It is a, it is a, a, it is a significant change. I have received many inspirational comments. One individual who, since the passage of the policy, was smoking over three packs a day, is now down to less than seven cigarettes a day, and said that by July 1, she will be tobacco free. So, and I've got seven, eight, nine, 10, 15 of those. I've had other people comment about freedom uh, to do this or not, and I understand that. I understand your choice to smoke or to use tobacco. And I think it's important that the university is not taking a judgmental stance in, in this effort. What we are saying is for the health, overall health of our institution, the overall health for our faculty, our staff, our students, and our visitors, that on our campus we will be tobacco and smoke free. And we are in the heart of tobacco country. I understand that. And that also brings up nuances to it. But I'm also reminded that Duke University, who was founded by the Duke family, who had made and continue to make uh, their fortune on tobacco is also a tobacco free, company, uh, free uh, institution. We're not alone in this and we will move forward. With that, I'd be more than happy to answer any general questions or, or if there are a specific question, I'll talk to somebody else uh, or feel free to throw bananas at me, I don't care. Questions? Before, actually, before we do that, would the members of the steering committee please stand up and be recognized? Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Seeing none, which I, I will stick around, I will turn my microphone off so they won't record it up there. Uh, and answer any questions or concerns or anything along, along those lines as well. Uh, I appreciate your support in this effort. I appreciate uh, what you do for Murray State uh, on a daily basis and really supporting our students. It is a beautiful day outside. It is a great day in the Commonwealth and a wonderful day to be a racer. So thank you very much and I look forward to talking with you more. Have a good day.